And hello everyone, welcome back to another bootstrap tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we took a little bit of a look at navs. Let's expand on that and actually create ourselves nav bars. So let's just go like this. We can clean up a bit. And here we go. Now, whilst a nav and a nav bar may sound very similar, in Bootstrap they are actually different. A nav in Bootstrap is a navigation link, whilst a nav bar refers to the bar itself where you put navigation on. So let's get an example here. We can create a div with the class of nav bar and then nav bar expand sm this is an optional one but it will make the nav bar expand the entire screen and then of course you can choose the coloring you want such as bg light or bg dark cool then in here we want a div with the class name of container fluid and then a ul tag with nav bar nav that has a few li tags in it with the class name of nav item. We can maybe make free. And in here we can just put a tags with the nav link class. That just says link. And it don't necessarily need to go anywhere. Link one, link two, and link three. Here we go. And you should see a nav bar like this. It's actually expanding the entire screen here. So if we were to just go here and say BG dark, you'll notice it expands the entire screen. And if we were to remove this expand here, you'll notice it now just kind of plops here. So when you say expand, it will expand it. So it goes like this for the entire screen instead of from top to bottom to the entire screen. However, oftentimes you don't want your links to just be there at the top left. It's somewhat boring. You can easily center it by just adding the justify content center class. And I will, of course, justify so the content is in the center. And my bad, this should be inside of this container fluid div here. And I will justify the content to be in the center. Now we've already talked a bit about coloring here. So you have dark, primary, secondary, all of the colors you would usually have. We usually cover this a lot, so I'm not going to go over it again. And of course you have your link type. So you have active and you also have disabled like that. And now you'll notice, oh, that's very difficult to read. Let's maybe go from primary back to dark. And there you go. Now, generally, when you do something such as B, BG primary, you want to set the nav bar's theme color to something different, such as nav bar. And that will make sure that if this happens, we can still see everything here. So as you can see, we can actually see this. But without this, since it will not be themed in a dark way for this background primary here, we'll just see this and you can't read that. But if you add this nav bar dark, it will allow us to make this a little bit more visible. You can, of course, add a logo by going right here inside of this div and then going A of the class name of nav bar brand. And its a shrift can just be in hashtag. And then, of course, you can have your logo here. And I will put a logo for you onto the nav bar. Now generally you actually want a real logo in here, so I do have an image, tree.png, just a square image with a tree in it, that we can put in here where this logo is. So we can just go here and say image, and the source can just be tree.png here, and the alt can be logo. And if we save this, it will not like look quite as we expect because the image is pretty big. So we might just want to go with, and I believe 40 is automatically in pixels, and yes it is. And there we go, there's our little tree logo. 
And that's uh, not really nice blue color, so I'm going to just go BG dark again. And there we go. So there's a nice tree logo for us. You can also have navbar text if you need it. So let's go here and we can just say span dot navbar text. And we can go save trees. This could be like our company name or something. And now we should have a piece of text here. And we can just say navbar dark just to make sure we can actually see it there. And there we go, save trees, and there's our logo next to it. And then with link one, link two, link three. Now currently when our screen width goes very low, our navbar expand will switch from expanding back to drop down. So here, as you can see now, it's a drop down. Generally, when this happens, you most likely have a mobile device. And when you have a mobile device, you want to have a navbar toggle instead because generally this large navbar will have more than just three links or it might have 10 links on it. And then you don't want that to be constantly in the user's face. So we can go in here and let's go right underneath here. We can create a button and this button will have a class of navbar toggler. And this will toggle our navbar to kind of drop down like that if it's on a small screen. And then we can go type is equal to a button. We specify this in case we have a form that we want to try and submit data. And in data bootstrap toggle. And we can just say collapse because it should toggle a collapse function. And we can just say what it should be toggling. So data BS target. And we want to target the item with the ID, which we'll add in a second, collapse me. So right here. Then here we can just add an ID, if we create a div, with the ID of collapse me. And you can of course just move this UL into this div, and there we go. Now to finish up the button, we want to give it a little icon. So let's just go in here and give it a span. This span will have a class of nav bar toggler icon. So it will be an icon to help us toggle this nav bar provided to us by Bootstrap. Then this collapse me can also have a few classes because it is a special type of div now. It should be able to collapse. So we can say collapse nav bar collapse. And now we should have a collapsible nav bar. Click here, and as you can see, it collapse and uncollapse when the screen gets small. But when the screen gets big again, it will go back to normal. Now, of course, if we were to change this from SM to MD, then our screen will much quicker decide to go into drop-down mode. So we go here, plop, as you can see, it much sooner this time. Now we're in drop-down mode. If we go like this, there we go. You can have more types of things in this drop down, such as a, a drop down button, but that's pretty self explanatory given everything we've already done. Let's go to something a bit more extreme, such as a search. Sometimes you want to have a search in your nav bar. This is a very common thing you want to usually have. So I'm going to go down here to underneath this div. You could put it in the div if you want to, because then on mobile screens it will be in this collapsing div. That would actually be better, but for our purposes, we're just going to skip that. We can create a form with the class of the flex, and it will just flex the form so things are in the center and it can easily break and whatnot. Not like break the out looks, just break apart if needed. And everything will be next to each other. And you can have an input with the class of form control. And then me-2, it will be of type text. And we can give it a placeholder of search. And you can, of course, have a button of the class name of btn, btn primary. That just has a search. Now, if we go here, we have a beautiful search bar here at the right side navigation. And if we make it smaller, it will look like this. Generally, you actually want this search bar to be 
depending on your website, of course, it will change from website to website, but it generally wants it to actually be in here. So it appears like this when you flip it open. But it's also up to you. It depends on the website. Some websites might need that search bar there. Some may not. Now let's say we have the rest of the page. I'm going to go BR times, uh, let's go 30. So here are 30 break lines. They should give us a nice scroll. And you'll notice we lose our nav bar. Some websites need the nav bar to be there all the time. If this is the case for your website, all you need to do is go to your nav bar here and say fixed top. And now when you scroll, it will be fixed at the top. As you can see here, I'm scrolling because my scroll bar is moving up and down. And it will always be there, so it will always be visible. You can also fix it to the bottom instead. Some newer sites like to have their search bar at the bottom because mobile phones are getting so popular. Now when you do this, it will always be at the bottom and it will also never hide. So if you go like this, scrolling doesn't do a thing. And then let's maybe add a few more break line tags here. Just BR times 90. Okay, that's good. And now we have a nice, decently long scroll. Now you can also give this nav bar a sticky position. So we can just say sticky top. Then when the user gets to this nav bar, and this doesn't necessarily have to be a navigation bar, it can just be like a little pop-up that you stay on the screen. A lot of websites has these, especially when they like offer cookies and they want to force you to accept the cookies and you scroll, then you have this like sticky thing in front of your screen the whole time. Then now if we go here, we just add a lot of text. So let's just go P lorem times 90. That's a lot of text. Uh, 90 is maybe a little bit uh, too much, but that's fine. We can scroll past it. Wow. Okay. And as a little bit of a lot of text, I'm just going to uh, take a little snip out of it. And then at the bottom, we can also add uh, just a little bit of this lorem. Okay. There we go. Now, when we scroll, you'll see here is our navigation menu. If we scroll here, as you see, it stays there even as we scroll. But when we scroll up and pass where it was, it just goes back there. So this is a nice sticky way. I actually love this effect. I just don't really love how people are using it these days. But yeah, that is that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next Bootstrap Tutorial.